Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Once again, uh, you're tuned in to our uh, live program. Uh, we're studying the book of Revelation. This is our uh, midweek uh, interactive uh, table talk. So once again, uh, good day to all of you. I hope that uh, you had a good lunch. And uh, I hope that uh, you're having your coffee right now just to perk you up a little bit. So thank you for tuning in. And uh, I would like to be able to greet uh, some of our brethren who are watching me right now. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I know that there are people who are watching from different parts of the Philippines, from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. I'd like to greet you a good afternoon. And I also know that there are some people uh, from abroad who are also watching us. I know that uh, some people from uh, the United Kingdom, the United States, New Zealand, Australia, and other parts of Asia, I know that you are watching right now. So thank you for keeping me company once again. And uh, my son and I, AJ, uh, are here to serve you once again. And so uh, praise the Lord for this blessed afternoon. Allow me to just greet a few people before we uh, go into some announcements. So allow me to once again greet uh, Brother Oji and Sister Karen and Gracia, uh, Shawnee de Guzman, uh, Brother uh, Giovanni Almasan, uh, Lydia Reyes, S Sister Kathy uh, Bernedo, of course, uh, Sister Vera Ramas, Julie Guatno, uh, Sister Tessie Gamboa, Anabi Gabales, uh, Sister Mona Caballero, Conley Zitro, uh, Praise the Lord, Jojo Santiago, uh, Mary Ann Rendaje. Uh, praise the Lord. My brother Jess is watching right now. Maybe my brother Joey is also watching right now. So hi, how are you there uh, back in our uh, home in 16 Ledesma Court, Visayas Avenue, uh, Project 6, Quezon City. So I'd like to greet my mom as well. Mom, I love you. Uh, also my uh, dear niece, uh, Laika. Praise the Lord. Also like to greet uh, Chris Henry Abalye. Uh, Pastor Flora Pagikan, Sister Shirley Spinney from uh, Hawaii, June Garces, Pastor June Garces from uh, uh, Hong Kong, Sister Virginia Cabanilla from Surigao City, uh, Charity Tabita uh, who is watching us uh, from the Middle East. Hi, uh, could you please greet our brethren there in the Middle East? Fritzi Maranga, Sister Virgie Garlitos, how are you? Sister Marie Field from Malaysia. My daughter Hannah is watching right now. Uh, Eric Rosales, our pastor in uh, San Fernando. Sister Lynn Shive, uh, Brother Nestor T. Uh, Brother Jerry Bacaltos, hi, how are you? Liz Guevara, my mother-in-law, Mami Lulu. And I believe my sister-in-law, Loli, might be watching right now. Hi, how are you there in Cavite? Mona Caballero from Pardo. Taxon LC from uh, General Santos. Please say hi to... Uh, uh, Pastor Daniel Payumo and Sister Tess Payumo, uh, praise the Lord that they have been able to arrive safe and sound uh, in uh, General Santo City after uh, more than 100 days of being in lockdown in Metro Manila. So praise the Lord, they're right now in quarantine, so please pray for them. I'd like to greet Brother Jeffner Sapitula, our uh, pastor, of course, uh, in downtown. Uh, Mary Ann Rendahe from Hong Kong. Uh, Prime Jess Amonte, of course, from our church in uh, UK. Julie Guatno from Minglanilla. Cherry uh, Nieras from uh, California. Annabel Cagigas. Virgie Galagaran. Uh, praise the Lord. Sister uh, Ekar from Liluan. Mini Yaon. Jackie Sanalilia from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Could you please greet our brethren from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Sonia C. Charmata from. Laguna, Juliet Caballero from Lapu-Lapu, Ami Romano, uh, Nenita Velasquez from Andawe, Claire Kadampog, New Zealand, uh, Florky Salve, of course, uh, from Labangon, uh, Rosaline Nacario, Sister Caroline Amor from Tisa, Labangon, uh, Sister Charity Yutabita, by the way, is from United Arab Emirates, praise the Lord, Angie Biray, Talisay, Lonnie Hineroso, 
uh, Vicky de Guzman, uh, Celebran, Ashrem Presas, Iris Dinoy, John Quintana, Presit uh, Tidalgo, our pastor in Mulave, Neri Lerios, uh, and so many others who are watching, Sister Heidi from Vigan, Gail Chua, Melihor, say hi to Brother Alan, Lyndon Uy, hi, how are you? Valerie Chick uh, Pei, how are you? Uh, Jean Teodianco, how are you? Juliet Caballero, praise the Lord. So, Mila Blanca from the United States, Ruel Tan, Mirna Ingo, Senaida Yu, Mariter Bolo, Ryan Pagalan, uh, Edna Andaya, Coach Al Solis, Chichi Aguilar from Australia, how are you, Chichi? Uh, hope you're doing fine there. Felimon, praise God. Sister Marichu, Amil, how are you? From UK, Loy Hermoso. And Sales, uh, Brother Arnel is watching. Arnel Argon from the United Kingdom. How are you? And Sister uh, Sister Lani Agafe Luage. Uh, praise the Lord. Lester and uh, Kathy uh, Gababre. Nina Alex. Emmy Asensi. Jean Swegay. Jocelyn Rafols. Praise the Lord. Answered prayer for uh, Brother Jed Rafols, who is out of the hospital after having a bout with COVID-19. Feli Castro from Camp Aguinaldo, Jenny de los Reyes, Shelly, of course, um, and Reynaldo Tura from uh, Japan. Hi, how are you? Could you please greet our brethren there in Japan? Hallelujah. Fernando from Argao, Lynn from Riyadh. Please greet our brethren from Riyadh. Uh, Elner Aquino from Butuan, Kizia, Chris, uh, Sister Carol Balesterios, Emmy Camposo, Vera Ramos, Sandy Noel, Jonathan Sakabon. So, yes, thank you for tuning in. Um, also, Sister Delia and Brother Stephen Sarmiento from Hong Kong. So, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm glad that you could join us once again uh, in our series on the book of Revelation. And allow me to share a few announcements before we uh, go to the study of God's Word. Uh, first of all, uh, allow me to remind you that we're going to have live intercession. Uh, my son, AJ, will be our guest speaker this coming Friday. He will be talking about uh, how to overcome depression and anxiety. Uh, just this morning, I received a video from one of my fellow pastors from CCM. Um, somebody from a mall, I believe in Manila, uh, committed suicide jumping from, uh, I don't know what floor exactly, maybe the third floor. And so a video was shown and it's really unfortunate. Uh, some people are unable to actually uh, take the pressure anymore. A lot of people, of course, are under duress and... Uh, some people, unfortunately, are unable to overcome their depression, their boredom, their anxiety, their worries. And so my son, AJ, will be talking to you about uh, how to overcome depression and anxiety. I think that's a very good uh, talk that he will be giving to us. And then, of course, he will be leading us in intercession. So please do not forget that. And then, in so far as our IBI enrollment is concerned on church history, we, we thank the Lord. We have about uh, 65 students already who are enrolled. And so, we are allowing 17 more. And uh, this will be our last call, of course. Um, if some of you um, would like to uh, enroll here, this is going to be first come, first serve basis. So, again... Uh, if you're intending to enroll, we only have 17 more slots available. So hopefully uh, some of you can, can enroll together with us. All right. So right now uh, we're going to deal with uh, Revelation chapter 7. And we will talk about verses 9 to 17 because um, we only finished up until uh, Revelation 7 uh, verse 10. But we'll do a little recap right now so far what we have covered in the book of Revelation. But could you please join me in a word of prayer right now? Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this blessed opportunity to thank you and bless you, O God. What a wonderful day once again to serve you and bless you. 
and once again instruct your people regarding the Word of God. So we pray, Lord, that you might uh, anoint my lips, anoint my mind, give me alertness and endurance even as I uh, expound on the Word of God. Lord, I pray for your anointing and wisdom. I pray, Lord, for those who are listening to me right now that you might anoint them as well. And I pray that, uh, Lord, our study today might be meaningful. I pray for uh, my son, AJ, who is manning the uh, booth right now, uh, helping me out. I pray that uh, we will not have uh, any technical difficulties, Lord, and just lift up to you in prayer. Also, my wife, who is interceding right now uh, for this program. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, we'll do a little review of what we have covered so far. And this is just a, uh, a uh, brief run-through of uh, what we discussed in Revelation uh, chapter 6. In Revelation chapter 6, we find the um, appearance of the Antichrist in verses 1 and 2. And here we discover that he will conquer the world not through war, but through diplomacy. So he will present himself as a uh, political superman and the world at that time because uh, the world would have been uh, in dire straits in regard to very scant uh, resources and great difficulties taking place all over the world. They will embrace uh, the Antichrist. Uh, of course, as I mentioned to you, the Antichrist, of course, will not present himself as the Antichrist. The word anti, by the way, does not just mean against Christ. It could also mean in place of Christ. And so he will present himself as the real Messiah. Of course, he will uh, declare that Jesus Christ was the false one and that he is the true one. So he will be a political superman, presumably with Jewish blood. Uh, coming from the line of David. But then again, as I mentioned to you, quite possibly he might not be really from the tribe of Judah, but from the tribe of Dan. And uh, I gave you a little study on that in the book of Genesis. Uh, later on, however, in verses 3 and 4, he will show forth uh, his true colors. And what will happen is he will now uh, engage in war. And so... Uh, he will no longer be a, uh, a diplomat, but he will now start uh, becoming a dictator all over the world. So there will be much uh, bloodshed taking place at that time. He will use the sword. In verses 5 and 6, uh, we talked about inflation and widespread famine. We talked about the fact that uh, a daily wage uh, earner at that time will only be able to buy one meal for himself and so the difficulty is what would he feed the family so that would be a really difficult time uh, in the world in the tribulation period and then uh, also in verses 7 and 8 um, what we saw is that there will be widespread uh, war uh, famine and pestilence and because of the many plagues, um, we are told that a fourth of the earth uh, will die. So we're talking about more than a billion people dying. Now, I know that uh, right now the world is experiencing uh, a widespread phenomena of, uh, of death. And... Right now, we have eclipsed the 400,000 mark. More than 400,000 people have uh, died already. And of course, uh, here in Cebu, our system has been overwhelmed. That's why from uh, GCQ, we have reverted back to ECQ. So we're back to zero once again. And uh, well, probably it's really for the good of our city and our province because our health system is overwhelmed. Our doctors are appealing uh, to us already because many of them are becoming sick. And um, in a post by one doctor in one of the local hospitals here, uh, she's been overcome, overwhelmed by the number of deaths uh, that have taken place, uh, people coming in, having difficulty breathing. And so she made an appeal um, to the people that uh, we should really exercise precaution, wear masks, uh, exercise social distancing. 
and um, so that we could help the health system also. So again, um, we're talking about, um, so we have more than 400,000 people dead already, and that's huge, but think about more than a billion people dying. So that is what to expect in the tribulation period. And then in verses 9 to 11, uh, as the Antichrist will show forth his true colors, there will be a lot of martyrs, a lot of people who will uh, uh, be killed, beheaded, um, die through firing squad, uh, being impaled, and many other things. Why? Because, um, again, the Antichrist will show his true colors. He will oppose those who will become believers uh, during that time. And then, in verses 12 to 17, we talked about cosmic uh, disturbances taking place. Uh, there will be an earthquake, a powerful earthquake. Uh, the sun will become black. So we're, we're talking about an eclipse of some sort. Uh, the, the moon will turn like blood. Uh, the stars of the sky, you're talking about meteor showers. And uh, there will be... Uh, there will be uh, a change of topography because of the earthquakes. Uh, islands will move out of their places, and many will be affected. Many would want to die, um, and uh, you know uh, this is what we expect in the tribulation period. At least the first, uh, the first part we talked about the, the seal, judgments, and uh, that is what's going to happen initially in the tribulation period. So you can just imagine the kind of duress the people will be at that time. Uh, I mean, right now, a lot of us are worried, a lot of us are anxious, a lot of us are bored. Uh, some people get depressed. Uh, some people have already committed suicide. So it's just COVID-19. Not that I'm trying to minimize COVID-19, but I'm saying that if you compare COVID-19 for with Revelation chapter 6, there will be so much more that will be happening. It's like you will be attacked on all fronts and there's going to be no rest. Um, there will be uh, pressure on every side. And so the human spirit will definitely, definitely be crushed during that time. But the upside of that is that many people will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so that's one of the good things that will happen during that time. Uh, excuse me, just have to hydrate myself every now and then uh, just so my voice uh, could be preserved. So just excuse me for a while. So again, um, so uh, that is what's going to happen uh, in the first uh, part of the tribulation period. And so the result of that is that there will be salvation of many souls, particularly the Jewish people. We are told in Revelation chapter 7, uh, beginning from verse 4 all the way to verse 8, that there will be 144,000 Jews who would become missionaries. They will become evangelists and they will be spreading the word of God, the gospel, uh, with the time that was, that the time that will be allotted to them, the short time that will be allotted to them during the tribulation period. Now, thankfully, because we have technology, uh, they probably will be able to share the gospel not only through uh, travel, but even by using uh, the digital world, the virtual world, they will be able to share the gospel. And the result of that, and this is where we will now go in our study, um, the result of that in verse 9, it says this, after these things, I looked and behold, a great multitude which no one could count from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes and palm branches were in their hands. So uh, what we are talking about here is that there's going to be a harvest of souls, a harvest of souls that will surpass uh, the harvest that we have had all throughout the many generations that have passed uh, all throughout church history. So this will be the biggest, greatest harvest 
of all time. And you can call it the mother of all harvests. And of course, the reason why that will happen is because people will become very desperate. Uh, people will, uh, will really hope uh, for uh, deliverance. And so that's the reason why um, there will be a harvest of souls. And so there's an upside to the tribulation period. And actually, that's my hope as well um, right now with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, that's taking place all over the world. My prayer to God is, Lord, bring about a harvest of souls. Bring about a harvest of souls. I pray that people are not hardening their hearts. I pray that people are not being stubborn. I pray that people are really becoming more and more uh, uh, sensitive to what God is doing. May they have certain realizations so that they might come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And again, I'd just like to appeal to those who are watching me, if you still do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, now is the time to turn to Him. And He will bring about deliverance. And I'm not just talking about deliverance from COVID-19. He can, he can do that. I mean, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is difficult with God. But really, my, my greatest concern is your soul. Because if something happens to you, and again, you know, during these days and times, you can never be sure. I mean, uh, we have heard of uh, some of our friends, some of our relatives who have gone home, not just because of COVID-19, but some have had a heart attack. Um, in fact, uh, I know that there are two pastors who uh, passed away. They were not tested but uh, they had uh, COVID symptoms. And so some people are assuming that maybe uh, they may have been hit by COVID-19. We don't really know. That's not for sure. But people are dying left and right. And so you don't know when it's your time. And so I hope that those of you are viewing me, if you don't have a relationship with Christ, uh, God is really trying to call you to himself. And I hope and pray that you might understand that you are a sinner, that you cannot save yourself because the standard of God is uh, perfection. And because the standard of God is perfection, obviously there is no human remedy because there is no person who is uh, perfect. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And therefore, uh, because of that, the only hope that we have is uh, the salvation that Jesus Christ offers through the cross um, when he died for us in Calvary. Uh, he shed his blood for us to pay for all our sins, to satisfy the holy wrath, the holy justice of God. And if we accept him as Lord and Savior of our lives, if we repent of all our sins, the result of that is that uh, our names will be written in the book of life. We will be saved. Um, when we die, we will go to heaven, and that is our only hope. Our only hope is Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is the only way. He's the only door. He's the only gate. So you cannot hope to be saved by anything else except through the person and the work of Jesus Christ. And he offers salvation to you as a free gift. And again, uh, this situation that we are in only provides us an opportunity to come to Christ. And again, in the tribulation period, we find that people from every nation, not just every nation, but all tribes uh, and peoples and tongues will be redeemed during that time. So it will actually fulfill uh, what the Lord Jesus Christ um, had, had given over to the church as a commission to preach the gospel to all nations. And so that will be the time when it will be fulfilled. As of this time, there are still so many unreached uh, peoples and tribes, unreached nations. <coughs> <coughs> so, excuse me for that. Um, so, uh, there are still many unreached. And so, 
the time when um, they will all be reached is during the tribulation period. Now, uh, what we find here is that the Bible says that they were standing before the throne and before the Lamb, meaning to say that they were now in heaven. I will tell you in a bit who these were. In fact, maybe I should tell you they're actually the tribulation saints. And how do I know that they are the tribulation saints? Uh, you find that in verses 13 and 14, but uh, I, I will be preempting myself. So I, I'll go there later on. But anyway, these are the tribulation saints who will be martyred by the Antichrist. And so now they are in heaven. The Bible says that they are clothed in uh, white robes. White robes, of course, have always been symbolic of the righteousness that only uh, Jesus Christ can provide. So again, this is not our own righteousness, but this is the righteousness of Christ clothing us. Now, white also has been a symbol of victory. So these are overcomers. Uh, they have overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit. They have overcome because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Now also, they were holding on to palm branches. Now, the palm branches have been symbolic of... Um, uh, it has been symbolic of festive occasions, uh, symbolic of uh, um, happy celebrations. And so, we find here great joy and great happiness uh, in the presence of the Lord by these tribulation saints. And uh, again, that is what is in store for us. If you and I have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, if we are in the presence of God, heaven is going to be one happy place. It is going to be one joyous place. It is going to be a place where there's going to be festivity, a lot of celebration, and, and there's going to be a lot of, of laughter and gladness taking place in heaven. So again, heaven is going to be an exciting place, brethren. But more than that, of course, is the fact that we will be before the Lamb. The Lamb here, of course, is Jesus Christ. We will see our Savior face to face. And it doesn't get any better than that to be in the very presence of the Lord. As the Bible says, in God's presence is fullness of joy. And so it says that uh, they were wearing white robes. By the way, the white robes here are not the short ones, but these are the long flowing robes. Uh, basically, this is uh, what is worn by, by royalty. And uh, again, this speaks of the kind of uh, uh, honor that God will give to us when you and I are in heaven. And notice it says here, And they cry out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Now what is the occasion for celebration? They're not celebrating themselves. They're not celebrating their achievements. And, you know, we've got, uh, you know, we have had uh, some people who just recently passed away celebrated uh, preachers and teachers of God's Word. R.C. Sproul uh, went home to be with the Lord. Ravi uh, Zacharias went home to be with the Lord. And of course, uh, these people, we have, we have celebrated their lives. We have celebrated their ministries. Uh, we have celebrated uh, their, their charisma and their eloquence, their brilliance, their intelligence, we have celebrated that. But you know what? When we all go to heaven, we will not be celebrating ourselves. We will not be celebrating all our achievements and accomplishments. We will be celebrating only Jesus Christ and His salvation, what He has accomplished for us. So it says here, salvation to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. The Lamb, of course, is again the Lord Jesus Christ, whom John the Baptist uh, said is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, in verse 11, it says, And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. Now, we find here that the angels... And the elders and the four living creatures, what did they do? They fell on their faces. They worshiped God. Now, within context, what were they worshiping the Lord for? 
Well, they were worshiping the Lord because God deserves to be worshipped. That's the first thing. But aside from that, they are worshiping the Lord here because of the redemption of the saints. You know, the Bible says that the angels in heaven rejoice even if one sinner repents. And now, in this particular case, we're talking about multitudes of people that could not be numbered coming from every tribe, every tongue, every nation, and they will be saved. And this will result in, in a grand worship coming from the angels, rejoicing, rejoicing in what God has accomplished, rejoicing in the redemption of people. Now, angels uh, definitely know who we are. Angels know that we are sinners. They have been silent witnesses of our sins, uh, the, the skeletons in our closet, they are witnesses to that aside from the fact that God is a witness to all the foolishness, wickedness, perversion, sins, transgressions that you and I commit. And so can you imagine how you know, they, they are uh, exulting and rejoicing that sinners like you and I will be now in the presence of God? All because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And so, again, this is something that is amazing. It's amazing grace, in fact. And we are truly blessed that if we have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives, we are truly, truly blessed. When you and I came to Christ, boy, heaven was, was rejoicing. And if there are some people right now who are going to accept Christ, I tell you, heaven is going to rejoice over your redemption. Heaven is going to rejoice over your salvation. And I pray that you might come to Christ. And maybe you might say, well, but how can I change myself? Remember this, the change will not come from you. The change will come from God. All you need to do is repent of your sins, surrender your entire life to Him, and say, Lord, Make me the kind of person you want me to be. I accept you, Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior. And God will do the rest. He will change your heart of stone into a heart of flesh. He will place His Holy Spirit upon you so that you might be obedient to His statutes. So that's something that uh, the Lord has taken care of. Uh, he, he has taken care of your justification and He will take care of your sanctification as well. So moving on. Notice here, it says, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, uh, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Now, I'd like you to notice here, how many praise words were used in verse 12? How many praise words? Can you look at your Bible right now? Could you please count together with me? How many praise words are used here? All right, let's count together. All right, blessing, that's one. Glory, that's, one. that's another one. That's number two. Wisdom, number three. Thanksgiving, number four. Honor, number five. Uh, power, number six. And might, number seven. So how many, how many praise words do you find here? You have seven praise words words here now this sevenfold list tells us of what perfect praise looks like so in heaven that is what's going to happen there's going to be perfect praise and you know one of the frustrating things uh, I believe for us is uh, we can no longer gather together um, at least here in Cebu uh, for for praise and worship because again we're still on ECQ so we miss the singing uh, we miss the, the band playing, we miss lifting our hands, we miss uh, seeing people with their, their faces raised to heaven, uh, tears of joy flowing down their cheeks, people kneeling down. We miss that, don't we? And uh, somehow, you know, this is something that uh, we want to regain once again. But again, we just have to be patient and wait upon the Lord. By the way, my message uh, this, com this coming Sunday is very relevant. I I'd like you to invite uh, some of your friends. I know that many have become really, really impatient nowadays, 
And I'm going to talk about uh, waiting upon the Lord. And by the way, that was prepared uh, about two weeks ago. So I had no idea that we would revert back to ECQ. But again, uh, the Holy Spirit was guiding me and leading me. And obviously, that's the message that He wants us to hear this, uh, this coming Sunday. So please uh, spread the word around. We'll be talking about waiting upon the Lord. All right? So anyway, it's going to be perfect praise. The seven words here speak about perfect praise in heaven. And boy, uh, that's something to be excited about. That's something that, that you and I should anticipate and something that uh, we look forward to. It's going to be wonderful. I mean, the presence of God will just be amazing. Uh, there will be no holding back when it comes to our praise and worship. And the presence of God is something that we will experience in all fullness. And so it's going to be a grand, grand time. Praise God for that. Now we go to verse 13, please. In verse 13, it says, Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Now, who's, who's the me here? The me here is uh, John the Beloved, all right? He was the one who received the revelation. And so, one of the elders uh, asked John the Beloved, Those who are clothed in the white robes, who are they? And where have they come from? Who are they and where have they come from? John the Beloved answers and said, My Lord, you know. In other words, John the Beloved was saying, I, I don't recognize any one of them. And by the way, uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, many believe that the rapture will take place before the tribulation period. Because, and I'll show you in a bit later on why that is so, because John the Beloved does not recognize the church here. He does not recognize anyone belonging to the church here. So he does not know who the people are in this particular case in, in verse 9 and those in verses 4 to 8. He does not recognize them. So he, he uh, somehow uh, returns back uh, to the questioner and he says uh, to him, my Lord, you know. In other words, I don't know, so tell me. Who is it that are found in verse 9? And so the elder gives an answer. The answer is found in verse 8, 14. He says, I said to him, my Lord, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. So there you go. So very clearly, these are the tribulation saints, not the church. The church has already been raptured. So this is talking about the tribulation saints. All right? So clearly, that's what the elder says here. These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and they have washed their robes. Now, some people might contest this and argue and say, I thought that we had no participation in our salvation. Why is it that it says here that they have washed their robes? Now, we know and understand that the Bible clearly teaches justification by faith alone. So we are not saved by anything that we do. Uh, we're not saved by um, any, uh, any works because clearly Ephesians 2 verse 9 says that we are not saved by good works. And so what does it mean that they wash the robes? I believe, uh, remember when, when the Lord was asked, uh, what, what is the work that the disciples needed to do? And basically, the work, the work that he was talking about was to believe in him. So this is talking about when it says wash the robes, what it means that is that we have to receive Christ. Christ has died for the world, but we have to receive His salvation. We have to receive His sacrifice on the cross. We have to receive His forgiveness. So that's what it means when it says that they have washed the robes. 
So again, uh, for those of you who are listening to me right now, I mean, although Christ has died for the whole world, as John 3.16 states, you still need to receive him. And that is why the Bible says in John chapter 1, for them that believed in him gave ye the right to become children of God. So if you're talking about the good work that we have to do, the good work that we have to do, it is merely to believe in Christ, have faith in him. That is the only thing that we need to do. Now, having said that, I'd also like you to know that faith is a gift from God. Repentance is also a gift from God. So that is why uh, the reformers were right in saying that salvation is all by God, it's all by grace, it's all by faith. We have no contribution because even the faith that uh, made us receive Christ into our lives is something that was given to us as a gift. That's also very clear in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that, referring to faith, and that not of yourselves. The faith does not come from you. It is a gift of God. So again, you know, when you know that, when you understand that, what do you do? You just worship God. You just glory in God. You just praise God and say, Lord, I really don't deserve to be saved. I don't deserve to go to heaven. But thank you, Jesus, for opening my eyes, opening my spiritual ears, opening my heart, so that I am now in your very presence. I am now, my name is now written in the book of life. So praise God for that. Now, it says here, they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So it is accepting what Christ has done, uh, the, as the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So how do we wash ourselves? How do we become white as snow? We only become white as snow when we are cleansed and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I know some of you are saying, but you know, you don't know my life, Pastor Mel. I'm, I'm a great sinner. I've really done so many bad things in my life. The only thing I can tell you is that Christ can forgive all sins no matter how heinous your your sin might be uh, no matter how undeserving you might feel i just want you to know that there's still hope for you you can still be saved now here's the only thing the only sin that that christ will not forgive if you reject him if you reject christ that is an unpardonable sin there's no way you can get around that. There are not many buses going to heaven. There are not many roads going to heaven. There's only one road, one way, one person. And that's something that we have to understand and have to realize, accept humbly before the Lord, and Christ will come into our lives. Now, it says here, for this reason, verse 15, they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple. All right? As a result of what Christ has done, they are now in the throne of God. So again, it's not about us. It's about what Christ has done. And one other beautiful thing I find here, it says, and they serve him day and night. So if you're thinking that heaven is going to be boring because I'll be lying down on the cloud forever and ever, that's not going to be the case here. The Bible is saying here, we will serve him day and night. So there are many, many activities uh, that will be made in heaven. Uh, we will be exploring. There will be a lot of adventure. And uh, we will be following the Lord for the rest of eternity. So it's not going to be a boring place. There will be a lot of things to do. You don't have to worry. You will not be quarantined in heaven. Amen? You will not be quarantined in heaven. You will, you will have the whole universe. You will, have, uh, you will be reigning and ruling together with Christ. So the entire creation is something that you and I can explore and you and I can, can use for, for God's glory. It's going to be an exciting, exciting time, uh, brothers and sisters. And it says, um, And they serve Him day and night in His temple now some of you might say but 
in in Revelation uh, chapter uh, 21-22, it says that there is no temple. So is there a contradiction when the Bible says here that we will wor worship Him day and night in His temple and then in Revelation 21, it says that there is no temple. I don't think there is any contradiction there. I believe that what Revelation 8 is really saying is that the whole thing, the whole of heaven, is God's temple. All right? In fact, you and I are the temple. We are the temple of the living God. So, joining together, that is the whole temple, so to speak. There will be no uh, edifice or structure that we can define as a, uh, as a, uh, as a temple. But the whole place, the whole of heaven, is actually going to be his temple. So this is uh, not uh, a contradiction in terms. We just have to understand it within its proper context. And so it says, We will serve him day and night. They will serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tabernacle over them. What does that speak of? That speaks about complete protection. Okay, that, com that speaks about complete protection upon God's people because of the presence of God. The presence of God will cover us. As the Bible says in the book of Psalms, as the, mount the mountains of Jerusalem surround us, uh, so you surround us with your presence. And so we will be surrounded by the presence of God. So we have nothing to worry about uh, during that time. We will reside permanently in heaven. Never again will we be tormented. We will have the supreme protection of the Lord. So again, what a wonderful, wonderful experience. And then verse 16. It says, They will hunger no more. They will hunger no longer, nor thirst anymore, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any heat. Now, what is that saying? That's saying that um, in heaven, all of our needs would be satisfied. All. If you're hungry, you will be satisfied. If you're thirsty, you will be satisfied. Uh, and then it says, the sun will not beat down on them. In other words, there will be no discomfort in heaven. No discomfort whatsoever. Uh, right now, there, there is so much discomfort, most especially in this quarantine situation. There's so much discomfort. In heaven, no more discomfort. Everything will be uh, given to us on a silver platter, so to speak, and it's going to be really beautiful. It's going to be perfect. And when it's perfect, it doesn't get any better than that. Then it says, uh, For the Lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and will guide them to springs of the water of life. The shepherd will guide them into uh, springs of water of life. Now, what does that talk about? Uh, that is talking about ultimate satisfaction. There will be no boredom, which I believe many of us are experiencing right now. There will be no boredom. There will be no stagnation. Uh, we will never get tired of heaven. That's exactly what it is really implying here. We will never get tired of heaven because our shepherd will continually guide us to springs of the water of life. So there will be infinite uh, scenery, infinite tasks that would be given to us by the Lord. It's going to be one wonderful adventure forever. Forever. And then it says, God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Now, I know some of us uh, have been uh, uh, crying. Um, sometimes we can't help but uh, cry. Uh, and th there's so many things that uh, we, we do cry about, right? I mean, like in my case, sometimes I cry about my, uh, my inadequacy, my insufficiency, you know. Even while uh, I have been serving God, you, uh, three times a week, 
I still feel uh, inadequate. I still feel uh, very insufficient. Uh, I still feel that there is still something that is lacking uh, in my service to the Lord. And uh, actually that brought tears uh, to my eyes uh, yesterday. I was just crying and I was just saying to the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. Uh, I, have not, uh, I have not given you uh, my best. I've not given you enough. And, you know, um, somehow the, the presence of the Lord just comforted me. But, you know, one of the wonderful things that, that God will do in heaven is he will wipe away our tears um, and we're just very thankful to God that uh, that is exactly what what heaven is going to look like uh, most especially for these tribulation saints I mean can you imagine what they have to go through in the tribulation period and by the way that's the reason why I'm hoping praying that you receive Christ because the Bible says in Thessalonians he has not destined us for wrath and the wrath there uh, clearly in the context speaks about the tribulation period. And again, in our study today, we saw that John did not recognize the church. That's why when, when he was being asked, who are they? He said, Lord, you know, I don't know. I don't recognize them. So they, they cannot be from the church. And then the answer was, they come from the great tribulation. That's how we also know that there's going to be a great harvest in the tribulation period. And I'm praying even right now that there will be a great harvest of souls in this pandemic crisis. Please do not harden your heart. Please turn to the Lord and seek His face. So um, that ends uh, Revelation chapter 7. We already covered two chapters already. Uh, I'm really doing this very quickly. Um, as I mentioned to you, if you were with me at the beginning of this series, I taught the book of Revelation in our midweek service for seven long years. So what you're getting is um, the fast-forward version of uh, what I taught uh, slowly, piece by piece, verse by verse, uh, when I was uh, still handling the midweek services and talking about uh, the tribulation period, the book of Revelation, uh, that took me seven years. But now it's, it's really moving really, really very fast. So, uh, and by the way, uh, things have been happening at a dizzying uh, pace already. We don't know if the Lord's coming soon, so I might as well uh, speed this up so that um, at least if you go to heaven, you got the whole thing. And then in heaven, maybe you can correct me if I said something wrong all right so anyway uh praise the lord uh, that ends our uh, study today but of course we're going to receive some questions right now so i'm going to take a short break uh, we'll play a little music for you my son aj is going to play uh, some music for us to enjoy and so i'll just have a little sip and a little drink and then i'll check out your questions Alright, while, uh, while some of you might be formulating your questions, allow me to just greet a few people. Pastor Tata Manuel from Masbate, uh, Brother Poy Perez, our pastor in Karkar, uh, Nenet Duaso, uh, Leonila Escarda, Sister Cynthia Castaneda of uh, Higher Rock Christian Church. Please say hi to our brethren in Higher Rock. Uh, Maria Baltran from uh, the United States of America. Hi. Kizia Christie, Senaida Yu, Lilia Calcaben, uh, Eric Rosales, Malu Barcelona from Pampanga, glad you could join us, Brother Jed Cabellon, uh, one of the great coaches here in Cebu, Brother Warren Carbo from the United Kingdom, hi Brother Warren, say hi to Sister Sally and your uh, wonderful kids, Eileen Casas, uh, praise the Lord. Pastor Ramil Senisa, hi, how are you? Say hi to Sister Salve and the kids. Teresa Lopos, uh, Zenaida Patadilla from Cagayan de Oro, how are you? 
Ruth Seno, Jazil, uh, Jazil TC from our church in Lakewood, California. Hi. Please say to um, hi to Ezer, your uh, handsome husband. Sister Estela Colantes, Archie Bayanon, Rico Buot, Jerry Villarin, Rosa Robles Calderon, uh, also uh, Olive Cabalquinto, Maria Lisa Arana Sayud, Sister Ann C, how are you? Say, say hi to Pastor Nick C, if he's there. Sister Mirna Sapitola Venus Ants from uh, Baguio, Bernini Tangarorang, of course, one of our coaches as well. Uh, Nigel Ong, hi, how are you? Please say hi to Lawrence. Uh, greet him for me. Sister Joy Reyes, my sister-in-law, hi. Uh, Daisy Ebreo, how are you? Living Word BGC, Elaine. Ran Villamore, how are you? Dorin uh, Stitch, how are you? Uh, Adonis from Cagayan de Oro. Brother Gambit and Sister Cher from uh, United Kingdom. Cecil Toting, Norma from uh, Bohol, Chris Colabana, Edwin of Alfornon, my mother-in-law, of course, Mami Lulu, uh, Nelita Reyes, Edgar Gapus, our pastor in uh, UK, Dennis Navarro, Romel Egot, Wen Sposo, praise the Lord, Kim Salanap, Edna Peque, Sister Janessa Dayola from Palawan, Joni Senisa. Norma Sugarol, Manong Joseph Villamil from Marikina, praise the Lord. Lilia Calcaben, Elvira Ligtas, Maria Soco, praise the Lord. Elizabeth uh, Violanda, Joseph Baisak from Danao, praise the Lord. Sister Yang Yang, I'm sure you're very happy right now. Is Brother Jet watching together with you? Uh, kindly wake him up so that he could join us. Uh, Alex from Quezon City, Daniel Payumo, our pastor from uh, General Santos, June Bondok from Australia, hi, please say hi to Sister Dory, Patrick Jed Bidon, Alandi Lagare, Marian Bass, Brother Mark Cusi is watching, is in the house, hi, how are you Brother Marks, please say hi to Sister Isa, Marky, uh, Alan Quison. Uh, Pastor Tony Ibarra from Germany. Hi, how are you, Pastor? Thank you for viewing us, watching us. Uh, Fritz Rubilios from Ormok, Judelbit Buenaventura, Yang Bulusan, already in Ilocos. Please say hi to uh, Pastor Bong Bulusan, Stephen Joy Tabasa, Sandy Fuentes, another pastor of ours, Irma from Ilocos Norte, Alta Gracia Lao, praise the Lord. How are you? Alandi Lagare, Chantel Hilvano Boncalan from CCF. Please say hi to our brethren from uh, Christ Commission Fellowship here in Cebu. Say hi to Pastor Pat Melikor, Joshua Rafols, Arlene D. Praise the Lord. Christine Santillan, Shai Rosales, one of uh, frontliners. My son-in-law, Eros, is watching. Rolando de la Serna, praise God. Praise the Lord. RJ Basar, Grace Tura, Pastor Hill Kalma from uh, Pampanga. How are you? Say hi to Pastor Ding. Lorna Woods from UK. Phyllis Bidon, of course, one of our frontliners. Rain Maranan from China Bank Savings. Praise the Lord. Jenny Cadiz Peque. Praise God. So, yeah, just wanted to greet all of you out there. Uh, so, we now go to the question and answer portion. All right. Uh, good day, Pastor Mel. What is your take on the on the back to ECQ status of Cebu City? <laughs> what is my take? Obviously, we failed. All right, we failed, and that's the reason why uh, we're back on ECQ. Uh, this is the decision of IATF, and uh, again, this is based on data that they have received, and based on the data they have received. Um, they're telling us that we cannot remain on GCQ. Now, I mentioned to you that uh, some hospitals and some doctors, some nurses are already appealing to us because the system has been overwhelmed. Uh, in fact, uh, right now, they're having problems of accommodating 
um, patience. And so here's here's my take. My take is let's let's follow the directives that will be given to us by the city. Let's follow our mayor, Mayor Labella. Let's follow um, whatever IATF tells us to do. And again, let's do our part. Let's exercise uh, social distancing. Actually, one of the complaints that I heard uh, about us here in the province of Cebu is that many of us are not wearing masks. And do you know that in Bacolod, if you do not wear mask, you will be arrested and imprisoned for three hours. So that's what they do, just to keep everybody uh, in step. And so again, uh, let's do our part. Uh, let's stay at home as much as possible. Only when it's necessary for us to do our grocery or buy our medicine should we be going out. Um, so again, <laughs> remember this, we're not yet on a holiday. Uh, please, uh, so much work needs to be done. So again, I hope that everybody cooperates. Hi, Pastor Mel. What does Mark 2, 21 to 22 mean? All right, so let me just go to Mark 2, 21 to 22. All right. It says, No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the patch pulls away from it the new from the old and a worse tear or tear results. Uh, no one puts new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and the wine is lost and the skins as well. But one puts new wine into fresh wine skins. Now, what is the Lord Jesus Christ talking about here? Uh, listen. Uh, very important that you understand what uh, the Lord Jesus was talking about here. You need to understand that there was a tension right now that was taking place between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Not that there should be a tension. In the mind of God, there is no tension between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament serves as the foundation of the New Testament. In other words, there is no doctrine to talk about, no teaching to talk about, no... Uh, conduct to talk about apart from the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the foundation of the New Testament. Having said that, however, the Old Testament serves as a foreshadowing of the ultimate fulfillment that will take place in the New Testament. Specifically, the Old Testament was a foreshadowing of atonement, permanent perpetual atonement that would be achieved through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So in other words, there was going to be a transition from the Old Testament into the New Testament. And so the point was, you cannot go back to the Old Testament, all right, all right go back to the Old Testament bringing New Testament doctrine. You cannot simply go back to the past. The past is the foundation, but the past is something that we do not go back to. As the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, with a change of priesthood, of necessity, there takes place a change of law. This is the reason why the dietary laws are no longer applicable to us. That is why circumcision is no longer applicable to us in the New Testament. Many of the laws that we find, the burnt offerings, the sin offerings, uh, the grain offerings, the meal offerings, and the festivities that they were doing in the Old Testament, the, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Passover. This is something that we can draw or glean uh, teachings and principles from, but they are no longer to be practiced in the New Testament. So there was going to be a transition, and that transition provided a tension. And that tension, in fact, uh, came to a head because in the church, what happened was not only were Jews converted, but Gentiles were converted. That is why you have the Jerusalem Council in Acts uh, chapter 15 
Because what had happened there was the Jews were stumbling over the Gentiles because they were eating food that was not kosher. Uh, food that was not prescribed in the Old Testament. Of course, the Jews uh, growing up had gotten used to eating kosher and they were not about to change. You know, that would definitely bother their conscience. And so, but here were uh, the Gentiles, they had so much liberty and freedom. And what the Jerusalem Council did was to ease the tension and say to the, the Gentiles, well, you need to slow down, you need to chill a little bit because your Jewish brothers are stumbling. And this is the reason why you cannot put new wine into old wine skin. That's what it means. You cannot put new wine into old wine skin. They cannot be meshed. You cannot mesh the Old Testament and the New Testament. So I, I cannot, for example, um, make myself a Jewish proselyte, for example. I can't do that. I mean, um, I cannot do what, what the Jews are doing for me to be accepted in Christ. I am accepted in Christ by grace, not because of the works of the law. Now, that's Old Testament. I mean, in the Old Testament, they had to do that not to save themselves, but somehow to, um, to foreshadow what Christ would ultimately do in the New Testament. So, again, that's the reason why, you know, Jesus was dealing with this tension, and he was saying, you know, some things need to change. And again, we find that the change finally came in the book of Acts, and then when you go to the epistles, Paul was talking about the liberty, the freedom that is in Christ. He talked about all those things. All right, so I hope that uh, gives some clarity. Um, here's another question. Uh, good afternoon. Question uh, for Pastor Mel. Any tips on how to write a book? I'd like to be productive during lockdown for God's glory. Thank you. Well, first of all... Um, I'd like to commend you for your desire to write a book. And of course, uh, if you have some writing skills, I would, I would highly recommend that you, you get into writing. We need a lot of writers. Having said that, however, the question perhaps that I would like to ask you is, um, one, are you theologically trained? I, I think this is very important because... If you're going to write a book, definitely, and if you're going to write a Christian book, uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming that you're not going to write about an Avengers movie, right? So you're prob you probably want to write a, uh, a Christian book. So the question I have for you is, are you theologically trained? And the reason why that is so important is because when you write a book, you're not simply transmitting your life experiences. What you are transmitting is doctrine which could change the lives of people, which could save souls. And that being the case, the first step, if you're going to ask me, is to be theologically trained. So that's the first question I have for you. Secondly, do you have the writing skills? Um, if you have the writing skills, then that's fine. Uh, third, um, if you are theologically trained, and secondly, you have the writing skills. What I would advise to you is, and this was the advice of uh, Edmond Chan to me, by the way. Uh, my advice is to um, outline the book in chapters. So think about, first of all, what's the theme? What's the theme that you'd like to talk about? So for example, you want to talk about contentment. So if that is your covering theme, Everything that you're going to talk about in each and every chapter should be about contentment, a facet of contentment, a dimension of contentment. So that's what you do. So when you have the, the theme, then you start uh, subdividing what you want to share. So chapter one, what do you want to talk about? Chapter two, what do you want to talk about? Three, four, five. Now, when you write... Um, my tip for you is uh, it should, there should be a balance of doctrine and uh, personal experience as well. I mean, if you're going to write 
uh, a book that's more or less devotional or inspirational. There has to be a balance of doctrine and personal experiences. And illustrations are, are very important. Uh, stories can, can catch uh, and grab the attention of some people. So, yeah, uh, those are things that uh, I'd like to recommend that you do. Of course, uh, one of the things to do is to read up books, read books, um, read articles. As somebody once said, uh, some things are better caught than taught. So you learn how to write by reading writings. Um, and so that's a, that, that would be the start. And then, uh, obviously, you need, you need another eye. You need a second eye, a third eye. Like uh, in my case, uh, my second eye is uh, my son, AJ. Uh, my son, AJ, helped me do research work. Uh, he knows and understands that I'm a very busy person. I have, uh, I'm like a jack of all trades, and I do a lot of things. I'm a, uh, I'm a Bible teacher in our Bible school. Uh, I'm a Sunday preacher. And not only that, I, um, I handle uh, uh, administrative work uh, in the office. And right now, I'm doing this table talk. And now, uh, also, this coming Friday, I'm going to do uh, live intercession once again. And I'm doing pre-recording of my IBI. So, you know, I'm, I have so many hats uh, to wear, actually, in the church. Uh, how I wish I could just uh, focus on one part. But then again, this is my calling. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just privileged by the Lord to be able to do that. So my, uh, my son is my second eye. So he goes through my, my manuscript and he works on uh, the research materials. So he goes to uh, the library at CGST, checks out my references, and then he also adds some other references which could shore up uh, my, my writing. And so he's my second eye. But there is a third eye. My third eye would be my, my editor with OMF. So um, before that, by the way, my third eye was my mom, uh, who is an English teacher, uh, very qualified. Uh, she's, uh, she's an English major, and she did master's studies in uh, De La Salle University and also Ateneo de Manila University. She studied in the United States, in Penn State uh, University. So my mom was my very first uh, English teacher, so... She, uh, she, did, she was my, my third eye, and then uh, when I did Enough is Enough, I had a fourth eye, which was my, my editor uh, with OMF, uh, Michelle Alagao. And after Michelle Alagao finished up with that, uh, there was another editor who did that. So you're talking about a process of, uh, it's a very tedious process actually. So it goes through five eyes, and even more sometimes. Um, the approval, of course, of my book had to go through the board of OMF. And so that's how it goes. You know, it's, it's not that easy and simple. So that, that would be my uh, short piece of advice. Um, uh, of course, definitely, we, we can talk about many other things, but I hope that that will be helpful just to get your feet wet. Um, here's another question. Uh, Pastor Mel, is it okay to characterize the saints as Old Testament saints, church saints, tribulation saints? Right. You're right on that. But let me just add, uh, you have the Old Testament saints. Okay, you're talking about Moses, uh, Aaron, Elijah, uh, Elisha, Noah, David, etc., etc. So those would be the Old Testament saints. All right. Then you have the... Uh, the saints of the church, of course, the church saints. Uh, who are the church saints? Those who would accept uh, Christ as Lord and Savior in the dispensation of the church. Now, the dispensation of the church will not uh, be forever. As I mentioned to you, the dispensation of the church will end at the rapture. So, uh, when that ends, you will have the tribulation period. So, the people who will get saved in the tribulation period are called tribulation saints. Now, listen well. There, there will be martyrs 
there will be martyrs in the tribulation period, but there will be some tribulation saints who will survive physically. Now, those who will survive physically during the second coming, they will be the ones who will enter the millennium. And they will, just like Noah, they will repopulate the earth once again. It's going to be uh, an entirely new world in the millennium, a 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ, and uh, they will populate um, the, uh, the millennium. Now, having said that, the children, because they will have children, the children of the tribulation saints will be born. Now, remember this. Nobody's born a Christian. All of us have to be born again if we are to go to heaven or to become part of God's kingdom. So the children that will be born, some of them will feign obedience, meaning to say they will pretend uh, to have a faith or a relationship with Christ. And their true colors will come out at the end of 1,000 years when Satan will be released and uh, they will, there will be a one final rebellion. But again, I'm going ahead of myself. Uh, so uh, what will happen is that they will be rejected. Of course, they will go to the lake of fire. But the children who will accept Christ in the millennium, they are called the millennial saints. So you have four classifications. Old Testament saints, church saints, tribulation saints, and finally, the millennial saints. All right, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, one final one. Uh, Pastor, just want to ask, the multitude in chapter 5 and the multitude in chapter 7, are they different groups? Now, uh, let me just go back to Revelation chapter 5. Now, if you have a look at Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, I think that's what you're talking about, if I'm not mistaken, because you did not give me a verse. It says, uh, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you, were slain and, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Now, listen well, listen. Uh, it says here, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals. Now, who is going to break the seals? It is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, were the seals broken already at this time? Not yet. When were the seals broken? It, it, it happened in chapter 6. So the multitude in uh, chapter 5 is before the seals took place. So, this is really talking about uh, those who had been saved. This multitude is talking about those who had been saved all throughout church history. And uh, I believe that is what this is talking about. And interestingly, it says, listen well. It says, you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. That is why the church of Jesus Christ will reign as kings on earth in the millennium. So this is talking about the people in church, the, all throughout church history, those who had been saved, those who had been raptured, those who had died ahead of time, those who have received Christ. They, uh, this is the multitude that is being talked about. That's the church. And the church will reign together with Christ. That is why, you know, one beautiful thing about this is um, we will be reigning as kings. That's why it's, it's a great thing to study the book of Revelation. The Bible says, blessed are those who, who read this book. That's why if you're not reading this book, you will not be blessed. If you do not try to understand the book of Revelation, you will not be blessed. Notice how encouraged I am, knowing that I will reign together with Christ on earth knowing that I will not uh, be part of the tribulation period, knowing that there will be many uh, uh, people who will be harvested during the tribulation period. So it brings me great joy. And it gives me great hope. 
That's why it's, it's a blessed thing to actually study the book of Revelation. It's, it's rather unfortunate that many people are afraid to study and expound on the book of Revelation. And I think sometimes it happens because we're intimidated by all the symbols that we find here. But then as I mentioned to you, um, Scripture, let, let Scripture interpret Scripture. I mean, if you're an, a diligent student of the Word of God, you will understand the meaning of these symbols because you will find it elsewhere. For example, you will find certain details in the book of Daniel, which are very helpful in making you understand the book of Revelation. Details in the book of Zechariah that will make you understand the book of Revelation. Uh, but, yeah, it, it requires hard work. And obviously, that's something that... Uh, we all need to do. We have to work hard to be able to understand. But hopefully, this is really helpful to, to a lot of you. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess that's the last question for today. Uh, before we go, I'd like to uh, greet a few more people. Rizal Di Solis, Elmer Racines, Sister Edith So. Hi, how are you? Uh, Vicente Consenco, our... Another pastor in Pampanga, a good friend of mine. How are you? Pastor Vic. Darwin Ong, how are you? Uh, praise the Lord. Jacqueline De La Serna from Masbate, how are you? Praise God. Uh, Sister Ligaya Lazarte. J. Lu uh, B, how are you? Joseph Lau. Menchu Ebo. Uh, Anna Tapa from United Arab Emirates. Uh, how encouraging this is to know that People are watching us from different parts of the world. Praise the Lord. Uh, Brother Don Gillian, uh, how are you? Uh, I miss playing basketball with you. But remember, I'm already retired. So, uh, uh, But remember that I think we had uh, several championships together. We won four. So uh, that uh, record remains uh, to be broken. Maybe it will never be broken because of the quarantine. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, Grace Tura, uh, Edna Andaya, praise the Lord. Uh, Nestor from Palawan, Sister Charity Yoon uh, from, of course, Korea. She's based here right now, Anyo Aseo. Uh, Cynthia Arante from Aligunsan. Uh, Carolina from Kamputao. Uh, Will Belda, of course. Dali Manalili, Hong Kong. Liz Marcelo in California also. How are you? I know you're a Laker fan. Uh, Mabel Santiago from uh, UK, Christine Legtas, of course, Jessica Ekai Sabior, Ruel Pasqua, UK, Marlene Kiambao, my best friend D. Carino, Muriel Llanto, John Lee Christine, uh, Boarding House Room Rental, how are you? Praise God. So thank you very much for joining me uh, this uh, blessed afternoon. It's been a joy to be with you. Please do not forget, uh, my son, AJ, is going to do our live intercession this coming Friday. Very exciting. He's going to talk about how to overcome uh, depression and anxiety. Very much needed uh, in our day and time. And so uh, please pray for him. He will be leading our intercession. Uh, you need to hear a fresh voice uh, again. And uh, I think uh, it's good to be able to hear another, another voice uh, to be a blessing to you. And, and by the way, my son is uh, doing, uh, my son AJ is doing a Cebuano live Bible study uh, every Tuesday with our church in Living Word Liluan. So if you're Cebuano speaking and uh, you find it difficult to uh, listen to me or understand what I'm saying because I'm speaking in English, I recommend that you join uh, Tuesday's uh, Living Word Liluan. Uh, also, Bible study, it's done in Cebuano. So thank you so much for joining me. I'd like to end in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless you for this wonderful time. Thank you, O God, for uh, being with us. Thank you for blessing our time together. Thank you for using me. Thank you for blessing your people. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. So my wife, uh, who has been our faithful prayer warrior, says goodbye. Hi and goodbye. Also my son, uh, who's uh, the jack of all trades right now. The cameraman, the sound engineer, the music player. Uh, he's the one who's playing the keyboards. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. He's just uh, 
playing the uh, music for us. Uh, he's doing the lights and everything. Uh, praise the Lord. So we all want to say hi and goodbye to all of you. God bless. See you next time. Bye.